Hello and welcome to the Comlex Instant Review. Please visit comlexflashcards.com for complete Comlex prep resources. Let's review a case today. For each of the following pathological signs which I'm going to state, select the proper mediastinal tumor which it's most likely associated with. Okay, so you want to select the mediastinal tumor. Uh, when I say increased urinary catecholamine levels, what are you thinking? Well, is it thymoma, Hodgkin's disease, neuroblastoma, parathyroid adenoma, or a cystic teratoma? Increase urinary catecholamine levels. The answer here is going to be a neuroblastoma. What is a neuroblastoma? It's a highly malignant tumor of children, okay, and it occurs in the distribution of the sympathetic nervous system, and it's derived from ganglion cell precursors and usually causes an increased secretion of, keyword, catecholamines. Because of its propensity to metastasize to the bone and its histological resemblance to Ewing sarcoma, it's associated with elevated catecholamines is a major factor in the differential diagnosis that you would want to remember for the board exam. Alright, let's try another case here. Um, in the same situation here, you want to tell us the most common association of renal stones. What are renal stones associated with? which kind of a tumor um, are renal stones associated with in terms of a medial style tumor? Well, the answer here is going to be parathyroid adenoma. Remember, renal stones occur in like half of the cases of hyperparathyroidism, and other disorders sometimes are associated with hyperparathyroidism, including peptic ulcers, uh, pancreatitis, and bone disease, central nervous system disorders. So when you hear renal stones, you want to link it to a parathyroid adenoma. Okay, that's a key finding. Um, another factor that you can think about is red blood cell aplasia. All right, that's another high yield fact. What are you going to be associating red um, blood cell aphasia with? Well, red blood cell aplasias are associated with a thymoma. Thymomas are associated with myasthenia gravis, aglamoglobulinemia, and red blood cell aplasia. So remember these three. Myasthenia gravis, agammaglobulinemia, and red cell aplasia. These occur uh, typically as cystic structures in the anterior mediastinum. Most thymic lesions are associated with myasthenia gravis, um, and they are hyperplastic rather than neoplastic. Okay. What about a T cell deficiency? So patient comes in and they complain of a T cell deficiency. What mediastinal tumor are you thinking now? Well, the answer is going to be Hodgkin's disease. Okay. People afflicted with Hodgkin's have impaired cell mediated immunity and are particularly susceptible to mycotic infections and TB. And the severity of the immune deficiency correlates with the extent of the disease. Remember, the nodular sclerosing variant of primary mediastinal Hodgkin's is the most common type. What about a um, ectopic hair? All right. So if you have ectopic hair on the boards, what kind of a mediastinal tumor are you thinking? The answer is simply a teratoma. They're mainly dermoid cysts. Include endodermal, ectodermal, and mesodermal elements, all three. And the characteristic structures are cystic, poorly pigmented, with hair, sebaceous material, including teeth sometimes. And the dermoid cysts occur in the gonads and central nervous system as well as the mediastinum. So that was a quick overview of some of the common mediastinal tumors you may encounter on the complex board exam. Good luck in your preparation.